Alright, The Calling. Not exactly sure why it was called that, I mean, yeah, they got called to help find Korra, but that was really only at the beginning, and the rest of it's just the adventure. But, whatever. So, this is mostly a... Mm, uh, as we saw in the last episode, Tenzin has sent uh, Jinora, Milo, and Iki to find Korra, which is pretty cool. And this episode is about 70% focused on them, and them doing that sibling rivalry stuff. And I've noticed, every sibling rivalry with three kids is very similar, and it's all realistic, because that's how me and my siblings are. It's the oldest, who's like, the uptight, more introverted, plays by the rules, which is me. Um, the middle child, who's kind of the rebellious tomboy in a way, who would, whose basic job is to, <laughs> to annoy the big brother and use the, the little, to ad annoy the older one and basically uh, control the smaller one, try and get that one to do its bidding. And the la little one is uh, the idiot, <laughs> who's also just kind of Playful, it can be smart at times. Like, there's this, the Wizards of Waverly Place family, the Rus uh, Russo's, uh, the Tanner children from Full House. And that's kind of interesting because that is kind of how every uh, three children family I've ever seen is, including my own. So that was funny. In fact, this whole episode, I'm going to say, is probably. Not only the funniest episode of this season, can, with both these, this show and Avatar, it would be at, le at least in the top five of funniest episodes, as well as possibly in the top three, just in terms of just laugh out loud moments, because these three are so, them, their uh, camaraderie, I believe, think is the word, their banter between is just so funny. I love these three. Uh, Shin Shinora's the straight one, the, the straight man. Uh, Milo is hilarious. I, st I cannot understand why I didn't like him in the first season. It's not like he got better with like the second season. I could go back and watch the first season and still laugh, so I don't know. But uh, And Iki's that tomboy character. But anyway, so, yeah, all three of them have some really hilarious moments. I really love that scene where Milo is, is like, here, I drew a picture of the Avatar, and you don't see it at first. I'm like, oh, it's going to be a piece of shit. And then it's like, it's a really, really good drawing. Like, some, like it looks exactly like her, except it's not colored. And she's like, wow, that's really good. He's like, there's a lot of things you don't know about me. That was probably the funniest th thing, just seeing the fact that Milo can draw. Which is kind of scary for reasons that I don't want to get into. But anyway. Uh, so, yeah, I think Milo pretty much completely owns this episode in terms of comedy. Him and uh, that one girl, Tuyin, were actually pretty cute. They're on screen for, what, 30 seconds? And I really hate to bring back this old meme. I thought it was old after like 20 seconds, but 30 seconds of screen time, still a better love story than Twilight. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those two are cute. But even uh, Jinora and Iki, Iki have some nice uh, banter. And I think Iggy got some of the best development, like, ever. Like, Jinora has been getting a lot of development, and Milo has pretty much been... Eh, he's gotten some development, but he's always been sort of the playful guy. Iggy never really made much of an impression on me, but here she's like... It's cliche it is, as it is, she's suffering from middle child syndrome. You got the older one, who's smart, smarter, I guess. <laughs> uh acts smarter and can usually keep everyone in line and then you got the small uh the youngest who's just the playful one who everyone thinks is adorable including that old lady uh so 
Yeah, but in this episode, she, eh, as cliche as it was, it was still nice to get some uh, development with her. And her and Jinora had some nice uh, back and forth, uh, like this one scene. Remember when he used to be so sweet and cute? No. <laughs> that was probably, that was another one that was really funny, just a hilarious episode. Although there was one joke that I made, no, two jokes that I made that actually would have been funny. The first one is um, when Milo throws away the food and she's like, You threw away our food? We'll hunt for our food. I was like, okay, we're eating your freaking lemur. <laughs> Come here, Pokey. Like, that would have been funny. <laughs> but they didn't do that because they're vegetarians. Makes sense. <laughs> um... So did Katara become vegetarian? Like, I never realized, thought of that. Did Katara ever become a vegetarian? I mean, when she married Aang? Or is it just an only an airbender thing? Okay. Um, little note here I got. So they're basically going to find Dijinor, uh, Korra. All, all this banter between them, it's like, uh, I want to be independent, I want to help with the group, you guys won't listen to me, all that good shit. Um, and at one point, uh, Iki is captured by, that was hilarious, by the way, by, uh, I've never seen that joke fail. They use that in Avatar once too, where they look like they're trapped or bounded some way, and then they're like, um, yeah, about that. <laughs> and they don't even try to escape, I don't know why. That joke always works for me, but uh, she's captured by two Earth Kingdom generals who... We get a little thing about what uh, Kuvira is going to be doing, uh, and we see... Where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. Did one of those guys look like Sokka? Like, I swear to God, the one who was, like, the nicer one, at least at the beginning, looked like Sokka, who gave her the, uh, treat, whatever, uh... I can't remember what they... It was some funny word. So, yeah, eventually they find them, boo, yay, 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 and go to find Korra at the swamp, because, uh, Iki is relevant. She learned it, and she got good development. Good. But anyway, the Korra stuff. More Empire Strikes Back shit, including that weird going into the swamp deeper and facing your biggest fear, like with Luke, it was go, um, seeing himself turn into Darth Vader, and with her, it's Amon, um, season two bad guy, her uncle, whose name I can't remember, and, uh, Kavir, uh, uh, all basically defeating her, which I did. This is... This definitely shows that this is, like, all of this has been leading to something. Like, some people, I've heard complain that really none of the seasons connect, whereas Avatar had a big story arc that spanned the three seasons. This basically was, okay, season one had its own story, season two had its own story. Some stuff from season two came into season three, some stuff from season three came into season four, but no, we are, we definitely see more... This, this episode is definitely showing that they sort of had a plan. If they didn't, then they went. They definitely lucked out because it's like, uh, as Toph mentioned, all three of them wanted something that is technically good. Equality, bring the spirits back, uh, all that stuff. And, but they were out of balance. And... I think that's how dictatorships work. Communism. Great in theory, never works out because that's not the way the human race is programmed. Anyway, some more stuff with the Empire Strikes Back stuff. It could not be un unintentional. There's no way that they did not plan that. Uh, but anyway, I re again, Toph, just hilarious. Oh, what were some of her great lines? I, can't, I don't think I left, wrote any of them down. But I just love the way she treats Korra. She's like, you suck. That's basically what she keeps saying. You suck. You fail. And 
that's kind of like one of my professors, who's actually one of my favorites, because it's like, you know, sometimes you just need to be told that you suck, that way you'll try harder. I mean, yeah, it's nice to get some encouragement, but sometimes you just need to be told that you fail. <laughs> so, and it works, sometimes, but a lot of the time, but I'm doing pretty well in that class, so, anyway, um... The one other joke that they didn't make that I thought would have been kind of funny, even if they didn't do it, it would have been so ridiculously stupid, and I can imagine everyone uh, completely compl uh, just trashing this idea, but when Cora's like, I'm gonna give you a hug now, and she's like, oh fine, she gives her a hug, and then she just dies. Like, she just keels over and dies. <laughs> I know they weren't going to do that, and I know if they did, even if I laughed, I would be bitching about it later. But <laughs> I just, like, if she just died, and then Cora has another horrifying, <laughs> just this horrifying experience, and now she can't go into the Avastar state again, which she could now, because she got the medal out in a pretty uh, nice way. That was a nice little way to get the medal out. All she needed was, uh, Encouragement, no, she's needed. Which she is, let's face it, uh, Kuvera is kind of an evil, evil thing. So, um, I think that's all I got. So, yeah, this is probably definitely the funniest of the season so far, and we've had some funny moments in the other episodes, but this is the one that's, like, consistently funny all the way through, just because of those kids and Toph. God, I d even though... Cora left at the end. I do hope we see Toph again. There's no way we're not going to. Get Toph, Katara, Zuko in there. It's amazing how those three are still alive, but Aang, who was the youngest, I, I mean, maybe the fact that he was over, that he was stuck in ice for a hundred years somehow messed with his body, but yeah, I hope we see her again. Uh, but this was a really funny episode with some uh, good development for Iki, Jinora, Milo, Korra, basically everyone. It's just a very good, not bottle episode, but the development episode where they all, all the characters, even though the plot's not really going too far, and you basically it only, in terms of plot, the only thing that matters is the last five minutes or so, it's still a very good character development episode, so, um, yeah, one of the funniest, and I will see you all next time. Bye!